Hey guys and welcome to another Blender Nerd tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to do subsurface scattering in cycles. So the first thing we want to do is go to this website, Infinite Realities, and I'll just put a link below the video. And if you scroll down you can see some cool lighting tests and stuff somebody did. And then you can see the downloads uh, over here. And you're going to want to download the object file and the textures and the displacement as well. And once you've got these two here, uh, if you want the ZBrush file, that's cool, but we're not going to use it here. Um, that is cool. So just download those. It's just an OBJ file. Okay, so in Blender, right, what we want to do is go and delete the cube and the light, and then go File, Import, uh, what did I do? File, Import, OBJ. Go and find your download. And you're going to want to import the model first, so that's this one. And import OBJ, and you'll see it's way down here, and it's really small. Um, but actually, it's not really small, because if you think about it, one blending unit is supposed to be one meter. So if we take a look at here, that is about, yeah, the head's about 25 centimeters big, or something like that. And that's about right. So that's the right size. But if you take a look at this, you can see that these are actually separate objects, right? and we don't really want that so all we gotta do is select this and then hit control J make sure you have an active object which means one of them is a lighter orange than the others hit control J that's K control J and then go into edit mode and you'll see that if you hit L while your mouse is over here um, they're still separate pieces but they're in the same object so we just gotta select everything and then go in the toolbar and say remove doubles so remove 679 vertices and then you'll see hit L it's all one object cool right and then of course we just go and smooth shade it we'll add a subsurf later because this you know we want it to render quickly first okay so now we're going to switch over to the cycles renderer right and if you and just enable GPU rendering, which means going to user preferences and choosing the right graphics cards and saying GPU compute. So it's going to be nice fast rendering. And what we want to do is under the integrator, set the preview samples to zero so that it'll just continue uh, computing it and not stop at 10 samples. And then enable no caustics. Uh, because we're going to be doing some strange things and caustics might get in the way and do some other strange things we don't want. Okay, so now we want to set up our lighting, right? And we've already deleted the default lamp. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and add a plane, rotate it on the y-axis by 90 degrees, move it on the x-axis about that much, and then just scale it down a bit. Okay, we'll give it an emission material, and let me just split this window over here like that and then with the mouse hovering over here we hit shift F5 to go to the 3D view and now just take a look at this we can go and render okay so now we can see how bright our lamp is we're going to want to make this a lot brighter maybe 10 maybe even more later I want to move it back a bit 20. Let's do 30. Okay. And then I'm going to go into top view quickly, duplicate this lamp, and just rotate it and put it behind his head there. Right. So lighting looks a bit like that. Okay. And we'll put the environment lighting off completely so it's black. Okay. And then we're going to throw in a little bit of bounce lighting, but we're not going to use an actual emitting plane for that. We're just going to use a normal plane. So I'll move this down below him and scale it down. So you can see that it's now, because it's white, it's bouncing some light up onto him. We can move it a little further down so we don't see it in the camera. And then we'll do another one above him, a little bit bigger. So it's just filling in the shadows there. Okay, these aren't actually emitting planes, they're just diffuse, default material, no material. Uh, we're just using them to bounce the light. So if we want to change the color of the bounce light, we can just give it a new material. And we'll just call this bounce. 
and then make this one bounce as well and we'll just make it a sort of orangey skin color kind of thing cool um, right now to start texturing this guy and you've already downloaded the model file which comes with the texture files and the displacement map so it's all a matter of connecting 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 the dots so I'll just name this skin and we'll say use nodes and leave it as diffuse for now we say image texture open up the image and it will be uh, download head that's not head head and firstly the color image which is here and you can see it's got normal stuff that cycles can't use and we say color map right and there that's already looking pretty cool right it's very nice okay and then we'll load in the bump map so under displacement we say image texture open it up which is it should be uh, I'm lost head and displacements that's the other file you download and then you can choose the smooth.uv not .uv smooth uv these are very slightly different you probably won't notice much anyway open that up and you'll see it takes a little while to load it in because it's a tiff image which is a little more high resolution and everything and you should be able to see it doing something if you connect the right things the color not the alpha and then of course it's completely hideous and ugly because um, it's way too strong so to make it less strong we go color mix and connect it to the bottom one so then this fact value controls the strength on zero it's not strong on one ugh. so we're gonna put it on point zero two and you'll hardly notice that but if you just zoom in nicely you will see a little bit of difference and of course in orthographic view we get these funny wires showing through so be wary of that I'm actually going to change the view angle to 70 degrees and yeah so you'll just be able to notice the bump a little bit it's not that strong but it must be slight okay now we're going to start with the subsurface scattering and basically all it is um, is a little bit of translucency so there is a new thing in cycles since revision uh, what was it since 46 200 we're on, we're on 289 right now when I'm recording this um, so since 46 200 there was a new node if you go input uh, light path, it's not a new node, but a new little output, ray length. And this would be useful when making subsurface scattering. And I spent the whole day today uh, getting this looking nicely and looking nice and doing all sorts of stuff. And at the end of the day, it looked okay. And then I thought, let me just quickly try something else. And I just made a quick little shader from uh, translucency and diffuse, and you know, it looked better actually. So, yeah, anyway, we don't need that. Um, we're basically just going to go ahead and go to Shader, Translucent, okay? And if you're familiar with subsurface scattering in Blender internal, you'll know that the scattering textures are a little bit different from the diffuse color texture. You get your epidermal and some other stuff that I never really got into. Um, so what we're going to do is, instead of just plugging this texture straight into the translucent one, we're going to go and go to color, yeah, color, mix, choose soft light, put this on black, put the factor on 1, and you'll see it's a little more saturated and a little darker. And then we're going to go into the hue saturation values, and turn up the saturation a little bit like that and then turn up the value a little bit as well and then we'll plug that into the translucent one and leave the diffuse one with the default correct color material so you'll notice it looks like that that's what the translucence looks like now the strange thing is how does this help us this doesn't look like subsurface scattering and basically if you think of cycles physically, um, not cycles, a head, if you think of a head physically, the 
the skin is what has the subsurface scattering and all the tissue underneath it and the blood and everything and that's what makes it look so nice um, but the light doesn't go into the head and bounce around the head and do the scattering inside the head because we have a brain and a skull so no scattering really happens in the main part of the head because we have a skull and basically what we can do is give this guy a skull and everything seems to work great so let's just quickly finish this off if we go to shader mix shader and we can connect the diffuse and the translucent things together and I think a value of well, let's just put it on one for now we can tweak it later and let's give this guy a skull now it's not just a skull it's basically all the stuff underneath so let's cancel the render here and we're just gonna go and do a little bit of modeling so I'm gonna duplicate this mesh so it's the same and I'm going to hide it then what I'm gonna do is go into edit mode here now the skull and all the stuff underneath like the tissue and the bone and everything some parts don't have that like the nose the nose is a, like a bunch of skin and tissue and stuff and the bone only really starts here by the bridge of the nose well the back of the bridge and then the ear also doesn't have any bone in it in this you know the flappy sticky arty part that you see so we're basically well, and the mouth as well we're basically going to go ahead and select this edge loop here around the ear and hide it and then do the same on the other side and hide that and then we'll hover the mouse over here and hit L do the same thing for the ear on the other side and delete the vertices right and you can unhide these edge loops and then extrude it and merge at center okay same thing here extrude merge at center and then the same thing for the eyes now the eyes you just gotta well the eyelids you gotta find the first edge loop that goes all the way around and hide it same thing for here hide it select these delete them same thing and then for the mouth we just gotta see this little sock shape thing inside his mouth and go to the start of the lips basically out over there delete those vertices this guy over here extrude uh, merge at center alright and then the nose is slightly different what we're gonna do is just select it like this with circle select you press C to get to circle select and just select about that much and we can delete that okay and then we'll try and select this stuff over here because this isn't really one edge loop it's a bunch of edge loops uh, anyway okay and we've got a problem here I'm just gonna hide these and you see this vertex floating in space now we can delete that because it's sticking out there and that's cool maybe I'll delete whoops delete these ones as well okay that leaves us to extrude it scale it in and merge at center and then we basically got a non-manifold mesh and we can check by pressing Control shift alt m and it's gonna select anything that has a hole and there are no holes so nothing is selected okay so now this doesn't look much like a skull kinda of looks creepy so what we're gonna do is just select everything hit W smooth and then hit shift R to repeat the last action and just smooth it a lot you can even hold that in a bit cool so that looks a bit like a sort of underlying no it looks no more than a skull no more like a skull than the last one anyway so let's unhide the other mesh and then see what the problems are uh, this one is the right mesh and this one is the skull so we don't want anything to stick through here basically all we need to do is go into edit mode 
and then hit Alt S to scale along the normals like that. Maybe that's a bit much. I think we smoothed this a little too much. Yeah. In fact, don't smooth it at all. <laughs> we can scale along the normals first, so Alt S, scale along the normals, so it disappears a bit. Because you don't want too much skin on the outside here, otherwise it'll be scattering a bit too much. And then we can smooth it. And this part is sticking through here, and it's sticking through a bit there as well. So all we really need to do is do a little bit of proportional editing, which is this. Or you could sculpt it, or whatever you like. And scroll the mouse wheel to change the size of proportional editing. Okay. And that is it. You can check by going into edit mode and selecting everything and then just looking around for orange things. And basically you'll notice them in the ears. So you can just select these vertices here and scale them in a bit with proportional edit. There we go. Okay, so that is our skull. And now you notice when we render, the light can't scatter around as much inside of the head. But first we need to get rid of this material. So I'll just hit the X there, add a new one, and it's the diffuse. So the one on the outside is the skin, and the one on the inside is just a diffuse color. You can make it a sort of a bone color if you like. And if we render it, it should look a lot like skin. And it doesn't. And that's because we've got full translucency. So if we put that on naught, that's full diffuse color. And we can sort of check out the ears. Let me set up the camera quickly. We can go and hit numpad naught to go to the camera. And then over here in the properties bar under, what is it, display? Ah, this one. View. Lock camera to view. And that puts a little red dotted line. And basically that means we can use the middle mouse button around here and use our normal navigational things to control the camera. Anyway, I want the camera, by the way, to also be focal length of 70. And that's about right like that. Then you can turn that off if you like. Okay, so I just want to scale the camera down in the viewport. That doesn't adjust any settings, it just makes the size of the camera different in the view. So, now that we have a camera view, we can zoom in and see what our scattering is doing. And the easiest place to see that is by the ear. So let's turn up the influence of the translucency. And on about 0.5, you can see the red coming through there. Now you don't want to overdo it, otherwise it just looks weird. So 0.5 seems to be pretty good. You'll also notice it on the nose here, and everything else looks pretty cool. Now, if you're not used to subsurface scattering, you probably won't even notice the difference. But if you render out an image like this and another one with only diffuse, you'll see a big difference. You can even see it here. If you put that on zero, it's very plain and sort of flat. And, you know, there's no color. He's very pale and white. If you put it on 5.5, it's more red and saturated and fleshy which is awesome. And that is subsurface scattering in cycles. And that's, yeah, <laughs> cool. So that's the end of this tutorial.